In this video, we will learn how to integrate a simple robot using Power PMAC kinematics. We will divide this video into six sections, an introduction, a SCARA robot example, PMAC code, a test run, other tools, and finally, some concluding remarks. With modern robots and technology, users can automate more than ever before. Complex robots and processes that used to be manual can now be pre-programmed. In order to control these non-Cartesian robots, we must use kinematics to describe our machine design to our PMAC. With Power PMAX kinematics, your robot can have real-time synchronous control of all motors and axes. This also allows the use of all of Power PMAX powerful features and move profiles. Power PMAX open architecture allows full customization of your system. Any hardware can be used. Kinematics, motion programs, and software PLCs can run any code. Utilizing Power PMAX IoT capabilities, a system can even load raw material and pass its finished parts onto another station, transforming machine operators into supervisors. In Power PMAC, we have direct control of individual motors, but the goal is usually to position a tooltip in 3D space. For Cartesian systems, like a 3-axis mill, we connect the two with axis definitions. For non-Cartesian systems, kinematics are used instead. Kinematics are a powerful and flexible tool that allows synchronization of multiple motors to control the tooltip or center point of a mechanism. When a motion program is run, first PMAC executes the forward kinematic equations to find the starting point of the tooltip. In this case, x is 350 millimeters, y is 275. Next, a trajectory is created in axis space based on your move commands. In this case, the robot is moving right 100 millimeters and up 50 millimeters. At every segment of this trajectory, Inverse kinematics are executed to find desired motor positions. Length of segments is not to scale on the graphic. Forward kinematics can also be called when a PLC or terminal command checks axis positions. PMAC kinematics can be used for any non-Cartesian mechanics or robot type, many of which are described in textbooks. They are most suited for OEM custom robots that require customization, tight synchronization, and an ultra-smooth trajectory. To show a simple kinematics implementation, we will be using a two-axis SCARA robot. A SCARA robot has two links, each positioned to the correct angle by a motor. Link 1 is angled from a fixed position by motor A. Link 2 is angled from link 1 by motor B. The result is an arm that can move freely on a 2D plane. A real SCARA robot may also have Z and rotation axes for the gripper. Tooltip, or axis positions, X and Y, are defined in millimeters by the forward kinematic equations. Motor angles A and B are defined in degrees by the inverse kinematic equations. Both are shown on screen. It is also important to be aware of your robot's constraints. In this case, the robot can only move within a washer-shaped range of motion due to its mechanics. Some margin should be added to constraints in order to prevent the robot from reaching the boundary, as this could make it hard to control. For kinematics to be applied to the whole move, segmentation must be enabled by setting seg move time to a few milliseconds typically an integer number of servo cycles. While the motor speed limit will still be in effect, the coordinate speed limit will be required to limit tooltip speed. It is best practice to require the whole coordinate system is homed before motion programs are run. Motors should all be pointing to I in the correct coordinate system. Note that without kinematics, motors would be pointing to axis labels. All code in this video can be found in the included Power PMAC project. Next, we will declare all global variables that will be used in kinematics. 
You may also want to set any constants to prevent recalculating common expressions. Forward kinematics are responsible for computing the tooltip or axis positions from motor positions. This will be run once automatically at the start of every motion program. It can also be run manually for things like position reporting. The entire forward kinematic routine is contained between open forward 1 and close. The 1 specifies coordinate system 1. The call sub going to line number 100 is used to compute position twice for velocity calculation. Kin axis used is required to specify axes used in these kinematics. Axis positions are computed using the built-in kin pause names. Inverse kinematics are responsible for computing motor positions from tooltip or axis positions. They are constantly run during motion program execution because they are responsible for computing the positions the motors will be commanded to every segment. The entire inverse kinematic routine is contained between open inverse 1 and close. Next, the constraint is checked. If the new commanded position is valid, motor positions are computed using the built-in KINPAS names. If the commanded position is not safe, the motion program is aborted and an error flag is set. Having downloaded forward kinematics, it should now be possible to query axis positions. To do so, first address coordinate system 1 with ampersand 1 and then use one of the single letter commands from the table on screen. For example, to view actual position, issue ampersand 1p. If you wish to continually monitor axis positions, a PLC will be more useful. Positions can be placed in global variables for display in the watch window, plotting, or programmatic use. To create a position reporting PLC, first address coordinate system 1 by setting ldata.cord equal to 1. Next, use one of the commands from the table depending on what is being read. Finally, use global variables to record positions from D variables set automatically by these commands. The correct D variable for each axis is listed in the table at the bottom of the slide. It may be desirable to automatically enable the position reporting PLC after homing or on startup. Once all code has been downloaded to PMAC, do not try to run a motion program yet. Start by testing forward kinematics, either by hand or with jog moves, to minimize chances of crashing the robot. Verify the motor position using the position reporting PLC, making sure known locations and axis directions report correctly. In this case, the robot starts out at the home position. X is 400 millimeters, Y is 300. Next, motor 1 is rotated 90 degrees. Afterwards, X is negative 300, and y is 400. Finally, motor 2 is rotated negative 180 degrees. This flips x from negative 300 to positive 300. It is preferable to start with virtual motors while testing inverse kinematics in case the motors move in unexpected ways. Perform small movements in each direction with the CPX one-line motion program. Plot axis positions and real or virtual motor positions to ensure the tooltip moves the correct distance in the correct direction with no velocity discontinuities. In this case, the robot starts out at the home position. X is 400 millimeters, Y is 300. The tooltip moves up 10 millimeters and then left 10 millimeters. The inverse kinematic equations control the motors to achieve this trajectory. At this point, we can run an entire motion program. Add an example program like the one shown on screen to your project and download. Set up your plot and run with ampersand 1 b program name r. A large number of built-in math functions are available for writing kinematics or other PMAC script code. For more computationally intensive kinematic equations, C from script can be used to allow the actual kinematic equations to be written in C and run more efficiently. 
This will be covered in a later video. Additional PLCs can be written for purposes such as collision avoidance. The PLC can abort motion on its own or set a flag for kinematics. With kinematics, all of PMAC's powerful features can be applied to your robot. Just find your kinematic equations and constraints, customize our kinematics template, carefully test, and apply any other tools needed. Thank you for your attention. We hope that this video presentation was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to your local Omron representative.